Hey guys, this is Will at Third and Long. Today we are going to be looking at the Week 5 Top 25 games and predicting them. Who's going to win, who's going to lose, and what the final score will be. We have a lot of games, so let's go ahead and get started. Hit that like button and subscribe. The very first game we have this week is the Friday, September 29th game at 9 p.m. on Fox Sports. We have number 10, Utah, going to number 19, Oregon State. So at the rare Top 25 game on a Friday night, this game has upset written all over it. So number 10, Utah at number 19, Oregon State. Oregon State just lost to Washington State. DJU, though, he is having a pretty good year this year. They have been running the ball well. They have been playing pretty good defense. Utah. So Utah, is Cam Rising playing? That's the main question. Every single week he is supposed to play, but then he doesn't actually suit up. So I won't believe it till I actually see him on the field. So Number 10, Utah. They have no offense. Their offense is awful, but defense does usually travel, but so will that horrible offense. So until Cam Rising comes back, I think Utah will be upset here. Oregon State wins 24-20. to Next game we have at 12 p.m. on the Big Ten Network on Saturday. We have number six Penn State traveling to Northwestern. The only way this game is close is if this is a rainy, cold game. And supposedly, skies should be clear this Saturday. So as of right now, Penn State looks legit. They look legit on both sides of the ball. Offense and defense. Last week, Drew Waller faced a top 10 defense in Iowa. He had four touchdowns. That's probably one of the toughest defenses that he will face this whole year, and he performed well. So there's no reason why that should not carry over into the Northwestern game because Northwestern just honestly has no chance this year. It's very good that they're 2-2 two and two so far, so they are a 500 team at this point of the season, but they're not good, and Pat Fitzgerald is gone. So Penn State should cruise to a win 38-10. Next game, we have at 12 p.m. on Fox, number 8, USC at Colorado. Why is this game at 12? It's in Colorado, so it'll be 10 a.m. their time, and USC never plays at 12. So this is the rare time that people who never get to watch West Coast games get to see USC play in the morning on Saturday. Now, Colorado just got their butts whooped 42-6 versus, versus Oregon. So to me, that was kind of a wake-up call. That shouldn't happen again this weekend. They should definitely be better prepared this weekend. But USC has an elite offense. They are undefeated. Caleb Williams is probably the Heisman front runner right now. And he did win the Heisman last year. So they will definitely be prepared to play. And they love the spotlight. Williams likes the spotlight. Lincoln Riley likes the spotlight. So USC will win, but Colorado will make the game a lot more competitive. But Trojans win 45-27. to Next game, we have number 22, UF, going to Kentucky. So Florida should not be rated right now. Yes, they're 3-1. and one. Yes, they beat Tennessee, but their wins have been awful. And they beat Charlotte last, last weekend, 22-6. Charlotte who's 1-3, they beat 22-6. to six. So they have absolutely no offense. Graham Mertz is a horrible quarterback. So Kentucky's had a pretty good year to start the year. Kentucky's not necessarily very good, but they do have Devin Leary, who, who is the transfer quarterback from NC State. So this game will really just come down to which quarterback has the least amount of turnovers. Now, Kentucky has won three of the last five games. I think they are the better team. They're not necessarily good, but they are the better team. They will win this game, and that will vaunt them into the top 25. Kentucky will win 27-20, to 20, so the game will be close. Next game, we have at 3.30 on CBS, number one Georgia Bulldogs at Auburn. So Auburn last week just lost to the Aggies. They lost 27-10, to 10, so that was kind of a wake-up call for them. What's going to happen this week? Now, I, I do think Georgia will have their best defensive showing this week. But the question is offense. How will the offense do? How will Carson Beck do? Will they get a running game? Who's running back number one for Georgia? They still have not answered those questions. They still start out every single game slow. That works when you have a garbage schedule. But at some point, someone will challenge you out the gate and you have to be able to respond. But I do think Georgia's defense will carry this game and they will have their best defensive performance of the year. They'll probably have three to four turnovers. I, and I think Georgia will win 34-13. to 13. 
Next game we have at 3.30 on Fox. We have number two Michigan traveling to Nebraska. So Nebraska is on a two-game winning streak, so congrats to them for there because they did start out the year 0-2. Michigan has been basically sleepwalking through the whole season. Harbaugh did come back last weekend. Hopefully that should provide some type of spark to them, but they've been basically just on cruise control. The offense has not been doing much, but the defense has been playing at an elite level. They have only given up two touchdowns this whole season so far. Now, this game has, if you get caught sleepwalking, you might get upset, written all over it for for some reason just being at Nebraska. It just kind of seems like it's one of those games. Now, I'm not calling for the upset, but Michigan must be on upset alert. Do not get caught off guard. Nebraska, they lead the nation in rush defense. They're only giving up 46 yards per game. So Michigan might not be able to just lean on the run the whole game. So will J.J. McCarthy win the game? I definitely think he will. And I, I think they will win pretty handedly. But the first half might be pretty close. But they will ultimately win 30-10. to 10. At 3.30 on ABC, we have another top 25 matchup. Number 24, Kansas, traveling to number 3, Texas. So Lance Leopold has... Kansas starting out the year ranked back-to-back season, so congratulations for their hot start. Kansas has the number 12th rushing offense, so they're going to be running the ball a lot, and they are going to be running the ball at Texas. Texas has a pretty good D-line, but it's going to keep the defense honest. Perhaps it'll open up some things in the passing game. I I think mainly Kansas will try to keep the, the ball on the ground, try to run the ball, but mainly they are trying to drain the clock and keep the ball out of Texas's offense's hands. But Texas has a pretty good offense. They have Quinn Ewers. They have Worthy. They are loaded. I definitely think the talent advantage, just like last year, is what is going to make the difference here. Texas should cruise to a win, but the game may be close at first. And up to that fourth quarter, I, I think that's when Texas should separate themselves once Kansas's lines start to get wore out. Texas wins 38 to 24. This game we have at 4 p.m. on the SEC network. You have number 23, Missouri, traveling to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt Stadium is still half shut down here. Um, Missouri almost lost to Memphis last week. So that just kind of lets you know what they are. They are ranked, but I do not think they are very good at all. Vanderbilt, we know, is not very good at all. So this is kind of a game that could be an upset, but just like the others, I do not think it is going to happen this week. But the potential is there for it to possibly happen. Now, Vandy's D is god-awful. They are giving up 32.4 points per game going into conference play. So that just lets you know that Cook and Burden are going to be opening things up because Vanderbilt can't stop anybody. So they'll have no problem scoring. That's what will make the difference is Vanderbilt can just not get the stops on third down. So Missouri will win 34-21. to Next game we have at 6 p.m. on the ESPN. We have another top 25 matchup, LSU at 13, coming to Old Miss at 20. So Old Miss just lost a pretty tough game to Alabama. The game was very close first half. Things were not close second half, but they definitely did try that first half to keep themselves in the game. So what's going to happen this game? LSU just won a very close game versus Arkansas. That was an awful game. They have a lot of questions on defense, especially in the secondary. So I think this game is going to kind of mimic the LSU-Arkansas game from last week. So I could go 50-50 with either one of these because Old Miss could play at a high level. LSU sometimes can play at a low level. So kind of will they meet in the middle? It's kind of a 50-50 game. I think, just like I said, it is going to look just like the Arkansas final score from last week. But LSU will ultimately win at the very end, 31-28. Next game we have at 6.30 p.m. on the Pac-12 Network. We have number 9, Oregon, at Stanford. This is, again, one of those games that's usually on at 10 at night. So people who don't usually get to watch West Coast games will get to watch this game. So Oregon just beat the brakes off of Colorado 42-6. So they are feeling pretty high right now. Will there be a little letdown for this game? I don't really think so. Stanford. (laughs) So Stanford is going to the ACC next season. Is there an upset alert for this game? No. Stanford is god-awful, and they cannot score to save their life. So 
Oregon will have no problem running up the score first half. Second half, they will have the backups in. So Oregon will win 48 to 20. And they will win definitely comfortably. They'll probably be up 48 to 7 or 48 to 14 by the third quarter. Because Stanford's not a good team. And Oregon is definitely playing like a top five team right now. Next game we have at 7 p.m. on the Fox Sports Network, we have Iowa State at number 14, Oklahoma. So Venables has completely retooled the defense and the defensive line is playing at at an elite level, completely rebuilt through the transfer portal. That was the big question mark coming in from last year and Venables seems to have answered that question. So they are playing really well. Dylan Gabriel, he is a low-key Heisman contender right now. So definitely keep your eye on him. He's, He's having a great year. 12 touchdowns and one pick so far through the year. Now, Iowa State does have a pretty good defense. I think they're only giving up 16.5 points per game, and they're really good at rush defense. And Oklahoma still hasn't answered the running game. Who is their running back? And they definitely need to get more production out of the running back position because that will come into play down the line once they get into conference play or potentially the playoffs or a really good bowl game. But... Oklahoma will get the win here, but the Iowa State defense should definitely keep the game close the first three quarters, but Oklahoma will pull away in the fourth, and they get the win 31-17. to This game we have at 7.30 on ABC, number 11, Notre Dame at number 17, Duke. So Notre Dame just lost a heartbreaker to the Buckeyes. Will the bottom fall out here? No, I just don't think it's going to happen. Sam Hartman is a veteran, and he's played at Duke before. So nothing there should be a surprise to him. Duke is having a very good year. But as I said before, too much of the offense runs through Wiley Leonard. He's running. He's passing. Notre Dame is going to shut that down. So they are going to take him out of the game, and they are going to stack the line to where he can scramble. And they have a very good line. So I think Notre Dame's experience at quarterback and the fact that Duke does not have a balanced offense that's what will make the difference and Notre Dame will rebound with a very good win here versus top 25 team they win 35 to 20. Next game we have at 7 30 on the SEC network we have two and two South Carolina Gamecocks at number 21 Tennessee. So South Carolina showed us last year you cannot sleep on them In these games, they did beat a top 10 Tennessee team last year. It was a game. It was a 63 to 38. So they blew them out of the water. But that's why that's not going to happen this year. So Tennessee will see that coming because it happened last year. You're not going to catch them twice. And the Gamecocks cannot run the ball. They're 126th in rushing offense. That is awful. That is complete garbage. Tennessee will get their revenge. Milton, though, will have a so-so game. So he still will not look good. But Tennessee wins 38-24. Next game we have at 9 p.m., a pretty late game for Alabama. On ESPN, we have number 12, Alabama at Mississippi State. So Mississippi State, let's be honest, is completely hot trash. So rest in peak to Mike Leach. He, If he was coaching this team, they'd be a nine-win team this year. But since he passed, Zach Arnett has completely rebuilt the offense into a 1970 offense. Will Rogers has been completely wasted. That guy should have been throwing for 4,500 yards this year. They refuse to let him throw the ball. And when he does throw the ball, it's not to his comfort level. So they're not game planning things towards his strength, but they're trying to be a run first team. And it's not working uh, because they need to get with the modern times. Anyways, Bama should have a really good game this year. I think Milrow will probably have his best game of the year at, at, at this point. And Mississippi State is rudderless. What's their identity? They're horrible on offense and they have no defense. So they will definitely lose this game and they will lose this game 31 to 14. This game at 10 p.m., so a pretty late game. We have possibly the Heisman leader or coming in at number two or three. We have number seven, Washington versus Arizona on the Pac-12 network. So Washington has been so hot. They are the most consistent team in the country this season. They average 49.8 points per game. Penix, Heisman contender. There's death, taxes, and Penix throwing for 450 yards. Uh, He pretty much does the same thing every week. They probably have the best offense, them and Oregon right now, with USC probably coming in a third, but they have an extremely good offense, and their defense has been playing pretty well this season. Now, 
Arizona under Jedfish, they are a work in progress right now. So Washington should beat the crap out of them, especially first half when they have their starters in. So they will roll to a 45 to 21 victory. Like I said, death, taxes, and Penix thrown for 450 yards every week. It's guaranteed. At 1030 on Fox Sports Network, we have Nevada, who's one of only five winless teams so far. So that just lets you know how bad they are. Playing number 25, Fresno State, a group of five team getting into the top 25 this week. So Nevada is not good in any way. They are horrible on every side of the ball. And then you have Fresno State. So quarterback Keen, he is going to light things up here because Nevada has absolutely no defense. So they will cruise to an easy win. I'm going to say about 30 to 14. So that's my breakdown of the top 25 for week five. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.